Hey guys, welcome to episode four of the Linux CNC tutorial series. At the top right corner of your screen, you'll see a card that will take you to the playlist for this series. In this video, we're gonna go over stepper configurations, specifically when steppers are being controlled via parallel port. This is not gonna cover USB or ethernet type communication. It's also not gonna cover Mesa hardware. So there are two things that we need to go over. And the first very quickly is just going to be the latency test. The latency test is designed to let Linux CNC know the worst case scenario when sending signals to your breakout board via parallel port. So the numbers we're interested in this case are the max jitter in nanoseconds for the base thread. Now this is an artificially high number because what you're looking at is Linux CNC running in a virtual box on a Windows 10 computer. You can't actually control Linux CNC this way. This is how I have to do it so I can make these videos. So normally you're going to see this number probably somewhere between 10,000 and 30,000. Those are pretty standard. To give you an idea, on my old computer, I was using a 2001 Dell and my max jitter was about 30,000. Right now I'm using a much newer mini ITX Intel based board and it has a 32 gig solid state drive and my max jitter is more like 15 thou. So the better your computer is, the lower this max jitter will be and it's gonna be important and you'll see why a little bit later. Go ahead and read all of this on your own time, but basically you wanna to torture the machine a little bit and let this test run for a while. We're gonna come back up here to the application menu and choose step config wizard. And this program creates configuration files, INI and HAL for step and direction milling machines and lays connected to the parallel port, pretty much everything I told you. A lot of people seem to get hung up on the step config wizard. And while it's extremely handy in getting your INI and HAL files set up, you're gonna also need to be able to do a lot of hand editing to those files. And we'll go over those in later videos. But just for fun, let me show you real fast. If we just plow through this, we can create a configuration and you'll see we have a shortcut to my Linux CNC launcher and to my config files. You'll notice there's six files in here. You can also get here by going home, Linux CNC, configs, and in this case, it's called my mill. These are the same six files. So we're not actually gonna go into this right now. So let me just go ahead and delete this along with the uh, step config document. And we're gonna delete these as well because they're not pointing to anything. And we'll go through the step config wizard more slowly so I can show you uh, kind of what you might do when setting up your first configuration. So when we jump right in, we get the option to create a new config, modify a config already created with this program, that's important, import a mock file, which I have no experience with, create a desktop shortcut, and a desktop launcher shortcut. Those are the two files you saw up here on my desktop. And then in my case, we're gonna create simulated hardware configuration because this is a simulated environment. I'm not actually installing Linux CNC. You would leave that unchecked. I prefer to leave these two checked so you get the two desktop icons. As far as modifying a config that's already created with this program, if you've created a config and then you've done hand editing, if you edit that config through the wizard again, you'll probably lose those hand edits. So once you've begun manually editing your configuration, don't edit it again in the config wizard. So we're gonna create new, we're gonna step forward, we'll call this rust stuff mill. Mine is an XYZ machine. I do all my programming in inches. If you program in millimeters, you can select that. If you're like me and you program in inches, but your lead screws are metric, still go ahead and choose inches. For driver type, you may have one of these drivers listed. If you do, great. The closest thing on this list to my drivers is the Kelling 4030, although Kelling is now called Automation Technologies Inc. and this is not my driver. But basically by choosing one of these uh, driver types, it will automatically fill out this information. And this basically is the characteristics of your stepper driver, how fast it is. So what this is basically telling you is the pulse width between step commands and between direction commands. We're gonna leave these as they are for a minute, but we'll come back to these um, in a little bit because I wanna show you how these can affect the performance of your machine. Here's our base jitter period test again. We can run this and like I said, uh, do some torture stuff and try and find out what this max number is gonna be. For now, we're gonna set this at 30 thou and we're gonna come back and change that later as well. We can also choose one parallel port or two parallel ports. If your motherboard happens to have two parallel ports and you're gonna run two on your installation, then choose two. But in my case, it's just one. So this is where we actually configure the parallel ports. And it kind of shows you the weakness of going with a parallel port configuration versus something like a Mesa setup because we're limited to five inputs. On a Mesa, you might have 30 inputs, and I'll show you why this is important here in just a second. 
For now, we're going to turn off e-stop by setting pin one to unused. In my installation, I have a CNC for PC C11 breakout board, and it is set up like this. Pins two and three are X step and direction. Pins three and four for Y, six and seven for Z. We're going to turn off the A axis because I don't have one. We're going to turn off spindle control for now. We'll probably cover this more in a later video. We're going to turn off amplifier enabled. And then back over here to the pin ins, we're going to choose spindle index. This is one pulse per revolution. This is similar to the way Mach prefers to read index pulses. And this will be fine for just giving you a readout of what your spindle speed is. You're not going to be able to do any threading if you're on a lathe. You're not going to be able to do any rigid tapping, anything like that with just an index pulse. Normally what, or Ideally, what you'd like to have is a quadrature spindle index signal, and that would be an index pulse plus phase A and phase B. Now, on my lathe, I have index and phase A, but no phase B, and that does allow threading. So I can thread with just two signals. But for now, we're just going to leave it with the index pulse. Pin 13, we're going to set to all limits and home switches. This means we would have, let's say, two, three, six home switches that are also limit switches. Uh, they're all going to read on one pin. This means you can only home your machine one axis at a time, but it is a, a nice economical way to utilize your pins. Now, if this were a Mesa setup, we could choose, uh, you know, minimum limit plus home Y. You could go through and configure every single home switch and separate limit switches individually, and you would have enough inputs to do that. The other thing is, let me change this back to all homes plus limits. The other nice thing is if we wanted to use an e-stop in, uh, we can do e-stop and there are actually other buttons that you can create physical buttons that you can push a button and it will do something on your machine. But again, with five inputs, we're limited. So if I had quadrature here, we would now be using all five pins. So kind of a bummer. Uh, for now though, we're just going to leave this as unused. Parallel report base address. Uh, that's not really going to seem important right now, but just leave it at zero. And then I should have mentioned this earlier. If you have one of these four machines, go ahead and select a preset and it will change all of these uh, to whatever these machines require. Don't click on one of these after you've already manually set this up or you're going to have to do it again. We're going to jump forward to the custom Python VCP GUI panel, and I'm only going to do this just so I can show you. For instance, we can turn on a spindle speed display, and we would get something like this in our Axis GUI. Um, we're not going to use any of this for now. We'll probably go over P, uh, Python VCP in the future. There are other VCPs. These are virtual control panels that are quite nice. Although I haven't actually gotten any of them to work besides Python VCP. But again, for now, we're going to leave that turned off. Include classic ladder. We're going to leave that turned off. And we are going to leave on-screen prompts for manual tool changes turned on. We're only going to configure one of the axes just for the sake of time, and that's going to be the X axis. So I'll walk you through this, and then you can do it on the Y axis. So motor steps per revolution. This is important because every motor is different, but 200 is actually quite common, and it also happens to be what my stepper motors use. And again, mine are also from Automation Technologies, Inc., Driver micro-stepping, I use 1 8th mi micro-stepping, and that's because when I did my G0704 CNC conversion, I used Haas's DVD for conversion plans, and Haas uses 1 8th micro-stepping, so that's why I use it. I believe the higher the micro-stepping, the higher resolution you have per step, but also the slower your machine's going to be. Pulley teeth motor lead screw. Uh, this is a 1 to 1 if you're a direct drive. If you have a 1 to 1 pulley, you'll also leave this as 1 to 1. On my lathe, I happen to have a one to two for my X axis, but I would, uh, if you haven't built your machine yet, I would urge you go one to one direct drive when possible. That's what all the big industrial machines use. Well, not all, but most because they're much more basic, more reliable, easier to diagnose if there's a problem. Uh, so that's a little plug for one to one. Lead screw pitch. I can't remember what mine is exactly, but I know when I convert it to revolutions per inch, it works out to 5.08. We're going to set maximum velocity to six inches per second. I wish they would change this to inches per minute, but six times 60, this would be 360 inches per minute as our max velocity. And then max acceleration, go ahead and set it at something like 15 inches per second squared. This is a very common uh, acceleration speed. And I believe this is where Tormach actually runs their mills is at 15 inches per second squared. For the home locations and table table travels, uh, we're just going to leave all this alone for now. Home search velocity, we're going to change this to something even lower, 0.5, so that would be 30 inches per minute. And then home latch direction, we're going to leave this the same. And as what that means is when you do a homing sequence, your axis is going to move to the home 
switch. It's going to bump up against the switch to trigger. It's going to move away to untrigger. Then at this speed, it's going to bump up against the switch again. And that's when it's going to trigger and set the home location. If you change it to opposite, it's going to just move up to the home location and trigger. Then it's going to back away. And when it untriggers, that's going to set the home location. In my case, I use same and I believe most people use same also. Real fast, I want to draw your attention to the time to accelerate to max speed and the distance to accelerate to max speed. Right now, it's going to take 1.2 inches of movement to get our axis up to max speed, and that'll take 0.4 seconds. So the way that we can affect this the most is by changing our max acceleration. You'll notice that if I crank this up to like 50 inches per second squared, we now have a distance to accelerate max speed at uh, about a third of an inch and a 0.12 seconds. So acceleration really does make a big difference, but it's still going to be a limiting factor because your steppers are going to freeze or lock up if you accelerate too quickly in the opposite direction. So let's go ahead and change this back down to 15. And then I want to click on test this axis to show you that we're actually limited to 2.7 inches per second. And this is based on our jitter and stepper timings. So let me show you what I mean by that. If we go ahead and jump back to our max jitter and let's change this down to something like 15 thou. Now when we test this axis, we can go as fast as 4.1 inches. So we went from 2.7 to 4.1. That's a pretty decent jump. Let's go back. Oh, we got an error. Well, I think we can work around that. Let's go back and we're going to change this to something like 1,000 jitter, which is probably lower than you're ever going to get. And now you can see, oh, you know what? We need to bump this up. Let's just call this 25 something arbitrarily high. Now we can get all the way up to 6.2. So that's, a, that's you know, about two to three times faster than normal. But you're probably not going to have a jitter that low. So let's change this back to 15,000. And then what I want to do is show you what the timings for my uh, stepper drivers are. Mine are actually five microseconds or 5,000 nanoseconds for the step. And my direction are actually 1.2 nanoseconds, which is 1200, or I mean 1.2 microseconds, which is 1200 nanoseconds. Let's see if that makes a difference. So now we're back to 4.1 and that's because of our jitter. Let's change this down just so we can see how the stepper's being impacted. Okay, now we're back up to 6.2, and now the limiting factor is going to be our step time. Now, mine is not this fast, so I couldn't actually run this time, but if I could, 14.6. So that's like a six times uh, jump. So you can see now um, we're able to go insanely fast in velocity, but look what it did to our acceleration time. Oh, we're locking up here. Okay, VirtualBox just froze on me, so I had to restart it. Uh, we were looking at 14.7 or something inches per second in velocity, but look what it's done to our distance to max acceleration, or distance to max speed, 20 inches and 1.6 seconds. So you see, we're not actually going to be able to use all of that speed, even if we wanted to. Let's see, I think it was 14.7. Still, 7 inches to get up to max speed. That's just not probably going to be acceptable. So let me go ahead and jump back, and let's set this to what it should be. Let's see, I think this was the default, right? And we're going to change max jitter back to 15 thou. And this is actually how I have my mill set up. So my max velocity, let's see, we're going to change that back down to 3. And acceleration, we're going to leave it 15. Now, when you go ahead and test this axis, this is when you're going to find out for the first time if you've wired your steppers and drivers correctly. Because when you get to this screen and you click one of these green buttons, your machine should jog. If you do this and it's not jogging, then you've done something wrong and you need to go back and look at your wiring. If your machine is jogging, then what you'll want to do is move it to the center of travel. And we're going to do a plus or minus test area of, let's say, three inches. Now, I think in the uh, after the crash, I reset this and I changed my x-axis to 18 inches. You can see down here. So three inches in, I in either direction is going to be a six-inch test, which will be plenty fine as long as we start in the center of the travel. And then we're going to change this to something low like 0.5 and we'll leave this at 15. And then we're going to hit run. If you have a machine that has ways, make sure your ways are oiled and let it run back and forth for, I don't know, a few minutes and make sure everything sounds smooth. Nothing weird is happening. No catching, no grinding. And most importantly, when it reverses direction, that it doesn't lock up. If that happens, it means your acceleration is too high. Now, at a setting like this, you should be fine. And after you've proven it for, I don't know, three to five minutes, go ahead and uh, click run again to stop it, change this to one and run it again. And I would keep doing that 
maybe in 0.5 increments until you get up to whatever your max is going to be. In my case, three. Then when you're finished with that and it hasn't locked up on you, nothing weird's happened, then you can start running and bumping this up. Now on my G0602 CNC lathe, I was actually running this as high as 50 inches per second squared. And I was having no problems for the first probably year. And then a few months ago, I actually started having trouble. And when I started to troubleshoot it, I ended up bringing this back down to 15 inches per second squared, but it just doesn't matter. You don't need crazy high accelerations for your regular CNC mill or lathe. So if this is kind of what you end up at, don't feel bad. This is very standard. Most guys are running something along those lines. So once you're happy with that, we'll click OK. We'll go to the next axis. Uh, we'll do the same thing for the Y. We'll do the same thing for the Z. And then uh, this is where you can set spindle control information. We're going to skip all this for now. We're almost done. We'll accept it. And here we go. Now we have our config and we have our shortcut to our config files. So this should, this should give us the same six files we've seen in the past. No, oh, virtual box is being slow again. Hold on. There we go. So these are the same six files we've always seen. And if we click on this, it should launch Axis without giving us any errors. And it did. Now you'll notice I have some warnings down here at the bottom right. We're just going to ignore those for now. If you hold down Control and hit Spacebar, it'll clear out any errors you receive. And this is what Axis looks like. You guys have already seen it. Now, one thing I want to point out real fast, we're not going to get into Axis uh, in depth right now, but see these red, this red box, this represents our work envelope. So if all you have are three home switches, you can set your work envelope and change your machine limits. And as what this means is you don't have to have physical limit switches because if the machine is going to run a code and it's going to get outside of these limits, it'll tell you. So let's go ahead and try that. Oh, I need to turn on override limits. There we go. We can activate. And if I hit play, program exceeds machine maximum on the Z. So we could run it anyway and just, you know, there could be a chance that we're going to crash the machine or you can, uh, you know, modify whatever your, you know, where your home location is. Or in my case, we actually need to change where the Z zero is. It's reading it top to bottom. I'd rather have the zero down here and this be a uh, positive number up here. Anyway, that's pretty much it. So once you get to that point and you've tested each of your axes using the jog buttons and everything works, you should be able to get into axis and, uh, and then you can start playing around with your machine. I'm not really sure what the next video is going to be. I actually made this video about, I think this is probably the 10th or 11th time because the software that I have for doing video capture has been crashing on me like crazy lately. I don't know if it's an update to my video driver or what, but over the last probably month, I've remade this video over and over and there's always been one problem or another. So hopefully after I review this footage, it's actually worked out and I can get this one posted for you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, post your questions and comments below. Thanks for watching guys. I will see you in the next one.